we, we want to encourage you yes. um, and let you know that, hey, it's not over. You're not um, alone. <laughs> you're not alone. And <laughs> you are not crazy. Whatever you might be going through, God can set you free. This is not just words. This mm-hmm. is not just random talk. Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Quincy. And my name is Felicia. We want to share with you guys um, our journey uh, through marriage as well as um, how God delivered us and set us free and how we stayed persistent um, and pushed through in spite of everything that was going on mm-hmm. um, and how uh, you can do it all. So we want to encourage you know those married couples out there who've been together for uh, a little bit, um, maybe a long time, and maybe it's just been a rocky road, uh, but maybe hopefully this can be something that you can relate to. And uh, we just pray that you be encouraged uh, right now. And also could be on your personal journey as well. Yeah. Being young, single, because that's mainly where a lot of our tribulations or warfare I can say tribulations warfare yeah warfare that we went through was when we were young right um, that's when the enemy comes at you even twice as strong yeah. or so forth because you're a babe in Christ right you're babe you're still vulnerable you're mm-hmm. still new mm-hmm. um, that's the enemy's opportunity to attach a bunch of strongholds to mm-hmm. you um, habits uh, brand new addictions and that's when you do things that you mm-hmm. knowingly open the and door. unknowingly open the door right. right open the door to a lot of stuff you know right. and so we're just going to go into some things that you know um i dealt with she dealt with and how we we're both set free and mm-hmm. you know what god uh did for us and how we're standing strong today mm-hmm. um first and foremost i'm 44 years old and we've been married for uh 20 years coming up in february that's of right. 2022 um god's been good you know um and we're very grateful for that Mm -hmm. um so just diving straight into it you know if you're a man and you're watching this um from sixth grade until i was 25 years old struggled with pornography looking at porn um uh sexual addiction just you know very heavy lustful spirit you know on me however i had one foot you know in the church in the word of god and then i had one foot in this lust stronghold that had me Um, And after 16 years, you know, um, out of that 16 years was married two of those uh, years um, on the end of the 16 and really just had a day where I made a decision. You know what? I'm tired of this. I can't be doing this. I'm speaking at uh, youth groups. You know, I'm preaching at different places. I'm doing gospel rap. I'm putting out CDs and people are getting saved at the altar, you know, now, because don't get me wrong. God can still use you in your sin, but the devil is trying his hardest to make you walk around in condemnation you feel guilty you feel worthless you feel like you know what you know i'm just living a lie and so uh it's not that god can't use you but he wants your wholeness he wants you to be pure in heart you know and he wants you to press toward the mark and he has a reward for you when you confess your sins you know um especially the bible talks about confess your uh sins one to another and different translations says to confess your faults one to another Mm -hmm. and so in 2005 i decided to you know what I'm gonna get this over with. And so I share with my wife and I confess to her some things that I had been struggling with for 16 years. Mm -hmm. Um, The devil didn't like that, you know, and uh, so that became the start of me um, going through uh, deliverance, you know, all Mm -hmm. kind of things took place. And without going into too much detail, you know, was uh, demonically oppressed possessed um just anything pressed you can think of Mm -hmm. where the devil was just playing in my mind um and there came times when you know i couldn't read my bible you know uh all of a sudden i was in this dream state Mm -hmm. you know um my wife had to get me dressed i literally just had these Mm -hmm. spirits just messing with me for about two weeks uh straight and you know my wife at the time didn't know what was going on now we had been saved for quite some time but she did not know um from me uh, confessing that I was, mm-hmm. you know, struggling with pornography and, you know, I knew. And I thought it was natural, you know. I just thought, you know, being young, I didn't think it was a big deal um, until later that it was a big deal. Right. And when I uh, had confessed to God first, but also, you know, told her she cried, I cried, you Mm -hmm. know, but what I will say is immediately when I confessed that to her, God Mm -hmm. spoke to me twice within a matter of a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time without a shout of a doubt that I can say that I know for a fact 
that God had spoke to me loud and clear and instantly I felt these uh, this burden this this heavy burden mm-hmm. removed you know and you know I know for a fact that that was self deliverance you know um, just renouncing those uh, 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 the lust the the pornography the sexual addiction the things that I had been struggling with you know instant self deliverance came in mm-hmm. but at the same time you know we had pastors coming over you know different ministers on the phone um, praying for me as well um, and so that was hold the up, beginning Uh oh. also me as well not being prideful but hey my you wife, gotta give me some my wife was praying Hello. for me definitely yes, all she, the she time, was in my corner seven. praying for me hard seven. you know but let me ask you though because praying for the mind it started with the mind l- let's be real and we're going to talk about mm-hmm. your thing and, and, and how you were set free and what God did in your life but how did that make you feel for me mm-hmm. to come out and say, hey, because I remember she said, you know, when I told her that I had been looking at porn all these years and stuff. And I remember vividly, she said, well, that explains a lot. <laughs> I never asked her what that meant, but she goes, OK, well, that explains a lot. You mm-hmm. know, I'm sure it probably meant that there was less intimacy in the room. But anyway, that and also why when we're dating, pictures would just pop up when I would be on the computer. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. And I'm like, okay, so everything was adding up, you know, in his behavior, his, his, uh, how can I say his demeanor towards me, um, you know, and just the relationship was totally, uh, didn't recognize it when we were dating. How bad I say that. Right. right? Now we want to little disclaimer because here. we've never lived with each other right. when we were dating so i never really got how can i say the real you or seeing my true affection you know right. for you and maybe it was being lost somewhere else mm-hmm. you know um but what i want to say is disclaimer this is not bashing anybody you know what we want to show you is you know if god did it for us he can do it for you also mm-hmm. um and you know the realities of uh, experiencing something like this and how detrimental it can mm-hmm. be on a relationship and so it ultimately took me as a man to say you know what I am tired of this right. I'm so tired of this you know I would be on the computer in 2005 you know trying to look at something while my wife was in the living room and then mm-hmm. I had it all planned out to where you know if she walked down the hallway I'm clicking on a different <laughs> browser God would convict them because I wasn't you know? even thinking anything but it started wearing on me it started wearing on me and i truly wanted to Mm -hmm. be set free Mm -hmm. i truly wanted to be set free and that is the thing here you really have to want to be set free and then even if you you know want to be set free there has to be action behind it you know but between my wife praying um Mm -hmm. and then me confessing and being so vulnerable about it um and the different ministers and pastors and uh, you know preachers that came over um there was a true deliverance, you know, uh, for myself renouncing and, as and and it took specific scriptures that I had right. to read over him over and over. It was mind scriptures. Okay. It was the mind scriptures that I was reading constantly over him and praying for him at night when he'd be sleeping. And actually it was early in the morning when you were set free. Yeah. Now when we talk about deliverance, I just want to remind you just in case you didn't hear a few minutes ago, when I was oppressed, demon possessed, whatever you want to call it, because right now the the whole world is caught up on, you know, can a Christian be filled with a demon? And mm-hmm. we ain't trying to figure out all that. No, Jesus but, said, go cast yeah. out the demon. Okay, whether it's on he a person, did. in the person, go cast them out. Because off. the thing is, he opened the door. <laughs> because the door was open. There you go. If you the open the door... Open. You can have a demon. That's well, right. However you want to you know, categorize it. On you, walking behind you, down the block, following you. If you mm-hmm. open the door, you're going to have some mm-hmm. form of a demon. And because I opened the door mm-hmm. uh, many times. <laughs> right. Uh, many times. We're talking 16 years. Mm-hmm. You know, um, And even after he struggled a little bit. So right. So have... set free in 2005, mm-hmm. then had a relapse or two. You mm-hmm. know, but I was uh, really excited that God had spoke to me so I knew for a fact that there was a creator of the universe he created Mm -hmm. me he knew the hairs the number of the hairs on my head I was excited to hear him speak to me you know within those first few minutes and I was shocked Mm -hmm. and it encouraged me it built me up and I was on my way and you know what I'm trying to share is that 
deliverance is, is everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, God wants you to walk Crying in. Crying together and just being thankful that I received my husband back in his rightful mind. In my right mind, right. I, I would, couldn't read I the Bible. I didn't know when that was going to happen, but I kn- had faith and I held on and knew that one day I would get my husband back. My wife had to get me dressed. She had to dress me every day. Mm -hmm. She took a picture on Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2005. Mm -hmm. And she showed me the picture when she developed it. And I looked at the picture, and in that picture, I was sitting at a dinner table with roses, steak, potatoes, Mm -hmm. and I had a shirt on, and I was just looking like this in the picture. (laughs) She showed me that picture, and I ripped it up. I threw it away because I knew that wasn't me. You know, and so anyway, that was me. Um, And then, of course the devil wasn't done you know now that I'm set free three o'clock in the morning I'm asking her babe did I do this did I do that did I do these crazy things you know and she said yeah yeah you did this yeah you did that and I vaguely remember those things and this is what shows you how I was demonically influenced and some things I couldn't control you know um, but she said, yeah, you did all of that. Mm-hmm. And so I was set free, happy to be in my right mind. You know, as the scripture says in the Bible, you know, when a demon was cast out, you know, the gentleman was clothed and in his right mind. And so mm-hmm. uh, a few weeks later, next thing you know, my wife is demonically attacked. You know, you ask me, she's talking to herself. She's mumbling stuff. You want to. That was the first time that the manifestation happened um when i knew that demon spirits were real i i believe the holy spirit you know can still live in us right but and also still tell us hey you know there's something there and that was my first first experience um manifesting after my husband um and that was the first time um, that I can truly say that that's when it first started, was there. Yeah. Um, that's when the battles continued to happen after that. Uh, but, but, battles, but, but but let's take it back a little bit. You know, I'm not saying that, you know, my husband has a different story than I do. And right. many go through different uh, tribulations, different warfare. Um, so in my childhood... You know, many of you guys know what I've been through um, and my background and my testimony. But let me just reiterate a little bit of it. So because there's many that don't know my full story as well. First, it started with and there's no condemnation on anybody, my family members, you know, or my mom, anybody that knows me. There's no condemnation. There's no judgment here. I am just telling my story telling your story, and what I went through, okay, and how I got set free. Right. So growing up in a broken family already, uh, not knowing my father and my mother going through with my stepdad, going through many battles as they continue their relationship. As being the oldest, you remember so much. You know, we didn't live in a, a, a home that was so comfy. Um, broken home, living on food stamps, you know, many know what I'm talking about in that poverty mentality. We have food stamps too. Yeah. Uh, just living off of that with seven kids. I am the oldest of seven kids. And so just imagine that, you know, trying to make sure we had food in the house all the time. We were yeah. surrounded with nasty rodents and, and just infested and, and again, this is not for you to feel bad for me. This is not for you for to, you know, this is again, my story right. and what I went through. Okay, many of you guys have similar story as mine. As I grew up, teenager life, went through sexual abuse by my stepdad. Um, also in that time we had went to the country. Something happened to where we couldn't make the rent. We went to live in a small, just imagine a small trailer with seven kids, dirty, wow. no showers, hardly anything. That's why I, I feel for the poor because I've been there. Yeah, You have to be there in order to know what people are talking about. Just like my husband can connect with people that have went through porn and the fatherless, um, me as the father, you know, and not having a father as well, uh, 
knowing what it is to not have much. Yeah. We didn't have much, I'm telling you guys. And full body of poison ivy, poison oak, dirty, you know, crying, hungry. So that lasted for it about, I, I believe, about months. And my aunt was look, aunts were looking for us where we were at. Uh, it was the grace of God. It was by the grace. God guided them. Yeah. The angels guided them. It was... It was a miracle. I'm gonna tell you how they found us. They, it was just a miracle. They just found out somebody knew of somebody and a family member. It was just all God ordained. Let me tell you, yeah. all God ordained. Crazy. And I remember mm -hmm. seeing my aunts. I was so happy because I felt like I was in prison. Yeah. Mentally, I felt I was in prison. Couldn't do anything. Couldn't do anything. I'm the one that was victimized and in prison. That's how I felt at the time, and I just felt like I couldn't get anywhere, get a get away. That's how I always felt. Um, and so, in that process, my, some of my sisters and brothers were able to get away. Um, at that time, we didn't. Thank God, my aunt later on, again, it was great by, by the Lord, guiding my aunt again, knowing where I was at. It was it was amazing. Took me, and from that point on, I lived with my aunt. Now, in that time, this is, again, more things that I have to go through traumatically because then I find out that I am pregnant. So... A 15 year old not knowing what to do wasn't saved yet and I had to make a decision once I got saved you know I did ask for forgiveness and and so forth I just wouldn't know what to tell that that child of mine and I believe God could take care of him better than I can ever or her better than I can ever have so done you say you got pregnant you're talking about from my stepfather right, right. And so that happened, mind you, I had to go through that. That was another traumatic experience as a young kid that goes through that. Not knowing what's going on, you know, still my body's going through changes, my mind. And so from there, I go into a foster home. So that was another, you know, troubling experience because I'm like, okay, that's where rejection cre creeped in. Right. Nobody wants me. Yeah. My mom doesn't want me. My be. aunt doesn't want me. Who wants me? Yeah. Right? I felt so horrible, so terrible. And I'm like, what did I do to deserve this? How did I go through this? Why? You know, was I really bad? You know, you question yourself, you yeah. know, like, wow, was I really bad? Was I really a bad child? From there, you know, it was all great. God blessed me with my husband now. We started dating. God knew what he was doing. He put us together. Yeah. And we grew a relationship. And from that point, that's where... It wasn't delivered from any of the stuff that I went through in the past history yet until we got married, right? Yeah. And so as we got married, that's when you went through your thing. And that's when I went through mine. That was our first experience. And so that was a little manifestation, but got out of it, you know, prayed for, praise God, not fully delivered yet at that time. As, as I was young, many people were, a couple people, pastor and a pastor told me first, it was pastor that told me first that I was dealing with rejection. Mm -hmm. I now, mind you, I didn't know anything like that. I'm like, okay, what do you mean? Yeah. You know, who you, somebody tells you, okay, you have a spirit of rejection. What does that mean? Right. So I had to look it up and I'm like, okay, I can see that. That's where that came in. Now, as the years go by, you know, what hits me first is depression, mm -hmm. postponing depression with my second kid. Yeah. That was the ma second major hit that you know I went through um, in my trials and I'm like okay when is this gonna end because 
I'm like, mind you, this happened, you happened in 2005, few years later. Then I'm going through this. I'm like, okay, God, when is enough? When is it enough? When is this going to stop? And I'm crying and I'm crying to my husband and he didn't know how I felt, right? You so what did you feel? What, what? I, it was just, I just felt like really fear. It was a whole bunch of fear. Like I was scared of my baby. I was scared to hurt him. I felt he was evil, right? Yeah. I felt evil was around me. I was scared. I just felt a lot of evil and I felt heaviness around me. That's when I started hearing him speak to in my ears. The enemy was speaking in my ears. You might as well just kill yourself. You, you're going through this. Nobody wants to help you. You might as well just, hurt, you know, just get it done with. Just kill yourself. And I'm like, no. I would talk back to that enemy all the time, that demon uh -huh. that was coming against me to kill myself. I said, no. I said, that is a sin. I will never kill myself. I have my family to live for. I have my life to live for Jesus. I'm not going to find, you know, do that. And I was just so in fear that the enemy wanted me to kill myself. That's why I was crying. Now, here's really. the thing. I didn't really know what she was going through. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking like not babes in Christ, mm -hmm. but babes in deliverance mm -hmm. we didn't really know you know there's none a of it. there none is a of difference it back then it was not as much right well right but there's a difference between praying for someone mm -hmm. and actually ministering deliverance mm -hmm. you know uh, uh to someone you know casting demons out and mm -hmm. someone being set free you know the bible talks about you know uh jesus said you know uh, uh he's been anointed you know, uh, to set uh, the captives free. Right. You know, and so there's just a difference between praying for someone, mm -hmm. you know, protection and, and, you know, that they be blessed and, you know, then actually ministering deliverance. And she right. needed to be delivered. I you know, needed to I be needed set to be delivered free. and set free. Um, and so I, I needed that demon to go from my mind. It was right. totally just wrapped around my head right here. And so I got that revelation because. When I went to church, I made a decision to go to church. At that time, it went off a little bit. It was, you know, but not fully right. removed. Because demons hide. Right. And so what happened was I just went, and this is self-deliverance now, you guys. So you can be self-delivered. Now, the anointing hit me as I fell on my knees. Right. And, and I just started praying to God. I cried out to him. I said, Lord, set me free. When is my time? Can you just set me free? Please set me free. And I just went into deep worship. I just started, Lord, I love you. I surrender my life to you. Please take this from me. I'll do anything. Take, just take it from me. I want this, this to go away. Just take it away. And I just worship him, Lord, I love you. And I just w just started praying and I started just singing unto him. Once I did, I just started just praising him. And the glory of God manifest, you know, just around me, just surrounded me. And then that's what happened is the anointing just hit and the enemy couldn't stay anymore in the presence of the Lord. The angel came and said, enough. You know, yeah. I believe Jesus said, go set my daughter free. Just like for you, right? Yeah. Go set my daughter free. Enough. We have the angels that are assigned mm -hmm. to us, uh, you know, to minister and to those that are heirs of mm -hmm. salvation. And so I, I truly believe that's exactly what happened. I persevered through it <laughs> enough, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. I went through it and my husband went through it a while and he was like, okay, enough. He knows when we can handle it to the to the point to the T. I'ma tell you because I was just like, whoo! I was done. I was I was gonna. I told the Lord I'll do anything, and so finally that's when I seen, you know, and I didn't know my gift at that time, but I could see in the spirit rim at that time, and I seen a black kind of like kind of like a stingray. Right. Just 
away from me. And that's how I know that depression and, and anything like that is a spirit. I told everybody, I said, yeah. that was a spirit that was connected to me. Right. That was a demon spirit. And so that demon spirit had to go in the name of Jesus. Once it did. Do you remember that day when I, you came home and I was just so happy and joyful? I don't know if you remember. I, I don't remember exactly the day, but I, I, I remember when you were I going through. Up. I remember when you were going through and I remember mm -hmm. when you were free. <laughs> and I focused, I guess, more on the free because I'm like, yes, this is, this is over. Um, I got my wife back. Hey, I'm, there's the best feeling in the world. You know, I went through what I went through. And then when she yeah. went through, I didn't know what to do, you know. Um, but yeah, but pr pray for me. Yeah, yeah. Pray for me just like I did for you. But wow, that was that was tough, you guys. The mind, it's tough. It's tough. You never know when you're going to come out of it. I know what you're feeling. I yeah. got you. Anxiety, fear, worries, depression. Yeah. All of that is what I had. Yeah. And so, you know, we continually, you know, thank God. Um, and mm -hmm. But at the same time is... It's almost like someone drinking or doing drugs or mm -hmm. addicted to sex. You know, these are the things that you don't want to go back to. And so in order to position yourself in the future, you mm -hmm. want to make sure that you're not around those types of things, whether it's drinking, you know, sexual relationships or giving a foothold to the devil. Mm -hmm. You know, don't even open a door, you know, um, opportunities to become depressed, right. you know, opportunities to just, you know, uh, uh, you know, sit around and say, you know mm -hmm. what, I don't know if I want to be here anymore, you know, and just mm -hmm. give an opportunity for the devil to just come and just, right. you know, have a playground in your mind. Or even mm -hmm. for me, you know, looking at things that I shouldn't look at, just mm -hmm. opening the door. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, uh, a man going back to uh, his sin is like a mm -hmm. dog returning to his right. vomit, you know, and so why would you want to do that all over again? Mm -hmm. You know, when God, you know, can set you free, you know, um, he can deliver you. And, you know, our heart Mm -hmm. is that we can be able to uh, pray for those who are going through and experiencing some of the same things, you know. Um, and let me cut you off just a little yeah. bit because I experienced a few more. Um, that one was self-deliverance just really quick. Now, remember that God had to deliver me from the trauma from my past, you know, because yeah. I went through a lot and God had to deliver me slowly but surely deliver me from those things that traumatically happen, you know, dealing with abandonment, dealing with the rejection still, yeah. you know, those things were still real, you know, and anxiety, those things that were the last things that left me. So really quick, I, ju I went through and I experienced two more deliverance after that, because again, I went through a lot more traumatic experience um, in my past. So what happened was, Again, my second deliverance came with two friends. Remember how you said... Oh, you're talking about confessing your sins once. Right. Another. So I confessed my sins to my friends and yeah. what I felt at that moment, because that's what the Holy Spirit told me to do. Yeah. Confess. Right. And I confessed. See, this is how you get, get set free. When you confess your faults unto yeah, one another, exactly, yeah. you can be set free. That's how he was set free. Right. He confessed to me. Yeah. I confessed to my friends. And so that was the second time I felt the glory of God. I was set free from anxiety. No more anxiety after that. And fear went away totally. I was in the glory of God. That was a uh, second time. Third time was when I was when gather two or more in the mist there i'm in the mist yeah right right so i was in a prayer room this is when not only one person told me i was dealing with rejection a rejection a second person told me i was dealing with rejection not only a second person a third person wow. two were prophets one was a pastor an apostle and Three times did people tell me I was dealing with rejection. I mm -hmm. said, this rejection has to go in the name of Jesus. Has to go. I am tired of living with it. Right. So in the prayer room, I remember just hearing, call out its name. Call out its yeah. name. And so what did I do? I called out that spirit of rejection. I said, spirit and the rejection, go now. 
Once I did that, whoa. I started coughing. I start at first I yelled. I yelled so loud. I know people are looking at me. I yelled and continuous yelled. And then I started coughing up. Coughing up. Literally, I started coughing up. Right. I've never ex I've experienced a little bit, but not as much as I did at that time. So I started coughing it up, screaming and coughing up. And at that time, I knew after that I was set free from rejection. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. See, he'll take you. Process. Yeah. Process process to persevere through it all yeah, there i'm are, telling there you. are some instant de uh, deliverances instant you know, deliverance um, but, but we then, went through a process <laughs> yeah we, we definitely went through a, a process you know each of us um mm -hmm. and hey but to god be the glory yes because if it wasn't for his grace and mercy mm -hmm. and you know uh you praying mm -hmm. uh even for yourself you know um, right and 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 you know different uh like you said, different apostles and, and, and ministers, you know, uh, prophets, right. prophets praying over you, mm -hmm. you know, it, it takes those mighty men and women of God mm -hmm. are being used by God mm -hmm. uh, to help uh, the deliverance come to pass. And so praise God you know, for that. Like I said, once again, we, we want to encourage you yes. um, and let you know that, hey, it's not over. You're not um, alone. <laughs> you're not alone. <laughs> and you are not crazy. Whatever you might be going through, God can set you free. This is not just words. This mm -hmm. is not just random talk, you know. Um, and so because of what we went through and we've had dreams yeah. of casting out demons. Right. Now, you know, you're called when you have dreams of casting out demons. Yeah. And I've always wanted to confirm everything that everything we always confirm <laughs> and pray. Is this the direction, God? Is this the direction? And because of what we went through and we persevere and because of our Faith, keeping God. Yeah. All those battles me and my husband went through, we kept our faith. Right. We kept strong in the faith. We did not give up. Mm -hmm. We continued to persevere after God. We ran with him. Yeah. And we continued to love God with all of our heart, mind, body, and soul. And I said, I'm, per I'm loving you with all that I am, Lord all that I am and I give you everything because I told him that now he has confirmed through dreams through me to deliver others yeah. to set the captives free to help others that have dealt with the same testimony you know how I feel this is why we have testimonies because God allowed you to go through some things mm -hmm. some major things you, we're all going to go through some things. He didn't say that where we're going to have a, <laughs> what? <laughs> a perfect, Easy, perfect life. You know, I'm, I'm actually... You know, the enemy's in this world. We're not of this world, so he hates us. I'm, I'm right? grateful that we did go through some things right. because we can mm -hmm. minister to others. Yes. You know, I was once having a conversation with a pastor a long time ago, mm -hmm. and I was just casually conversating with mm -hmm. him saying you know hey if you didn't go through nothing you can't tell nobody nothing mm -hmm. and, and he was like no 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 mm -hmm. and he was just lightweight disagreeing but um no yeah you can still preach you can still you know tell someone something yeah. but it's different right. when you've been through it yeah, <laughs> it's it is. different when you've been set free from it you mm -hmm. you know it honestly it just carries more weight <laughs> you know because yeah. you, you got something that god set you free from and now you're mm -hmm. able to someone can relate to you right. you know what i'm saying and usually and that's, we're not saying you know you don't like, have to go through something but you may have went through some minor stuff it could be yeah minor doubt stuff, anything it could be fear you know right. all of that could still be being set free you need to right. be set free from doubt you need to be set free from laziness you need to be set free from from some addictions it could be some secular music it could be mm -hmm. drinking Opening it the could doors be lying still not cheating. pure right right it doesn't have to be something that she or i experience mm -hmm. you know but hey it's today god wants to set you free I, right I, I know that for a fact you know, and, and his heart is, is that you be set free, you know, that Amen. you can walk in the fullness and everything that he has for Praise you. God. And, you know, the devil just wants you to be bound. He wants right. you to be shackled. He doesn't you want know. you to grow. He knows your potential <laughs> and what you can become. 
but as long as he mm -hmm. has a foothold and you're and you're on you mm -hmm. um and as long as you keep opening doors mm -hmm. you know he ain't gonna say nothing he gonna keep hiding in those secret places secret places you know. inside of you yeah. that's why many people don't experience they don't believe that they have demons because they're hidden and a lot of people hey praise god you may not have <laughs> no demons right yeah. so praise god for that but many have opened the door it right. could be like tv watching tv watching you know watching things on tv could be harmless and you see you know things that we see all the time on tv yeah you're still opening your eye gates to those things listening to things you're not supposed to so we deal with things on a daily basis, you yeah. know? So praise God, you guys. Let's continue to be set free yeah. and go after what God has for us, the destiny. Are you going to stand up and want to be chosen to be used as a vessel and continue to do what God has for you to raise up in him for his kingdom? to bring glory to him. This is our mission, is to bring glory to God at everything that we are, right? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. you wanna pray for the uh, people that are watching right now, um, that they be encouraged? Yes, let's do that. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you that this positive message, this positive story, our journeys reach many that have dealt with similar situations or dealt with different situations, but they want to be set free. That is, that is the question. Do you want to be set free? So we just, if you want to be set free, we pray right now to be set free from addictions, alcohol, drugs, to be set free from cigarettes, to be set free from the things that are in this world that are taking us away from idols, new age stuff, thinking that it's God, but it really isn't. And from these spirits, sickness in our bodies, our mind, thoughts, starts with the mind. We right now, Father Lord, set everybody's mind free right now from depression, from anxiety, from fear, from worries, from stress. In Jesus' name, do not worry about tomorrow because God has your back each and every day. Do not worry. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father Lord. We love you. We thank you for the people being set free. In Jesus' name, yes. this day. Amen. 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 So you guys can reach us, right? Yep. Uh, feel free to comment on this video, actually, if you want. Um, also, there should be a link to either mm -hmm. an Instagram or our YouTube, um, as well as an email address. Uh, if you need prayer, let us know. We would love to come in agreement and uh, pray with you. Um, if you are seeking deliverance yourself, uh, we could also set up uh, a time and a place, a uh, location. That way you can actually experience deliverance. We know what it's like to be bound, uh, mm -hmm. to be uh, just demonically influenced, oppressed, possessed, and out of control. And like myself, I was literally talking to myself on a daily. Mm -hmm. So I know what it's like for people that are on the corner and the mm -hmm. homeless just talking to themselves you know mm -hmm. um, I was set free from that as well and so you know uh, hey be encouraged once again mm -hmm. my name is Quincy it's my wife Felicia um, and our heart is for you to be set free um, yes. and walk in the fullness of everything that God has for you so we love you we love you guys hey be blessed bye